basic formula and the method of performing integration. So let us learn the concept, the basic definition of integration. Suppose we have a function phi of x and if we differentiate this function phi of x with respect to x then we get a new function f of x. So on differentiating this function phi of x we got a new function f of x. Now the process of getting this function phi of x from the function f of x is known as integration or we can say the method of getting phi of x function from this function f of x is known as integration. So let us see how to integrate this function f of x so that we can get the function phi of x. Okay. So if we write d phi of x this means a small component of function phi of x. So integration means basically adding or summing. Integrating dx means x. So integration means basically adding or summing. Okay. If we keep on adding all the small component of this function x then after adding all this component we will get the function x. So if we integrate d phi of x we will get the function phi of x. So let us see how to integrate the function f of x in order to get the function phi of x. So suppose a function is phi of x here and if we multiply this dx in this side so it will be f of x into dx now if we integrate both side so this will be phi of x from this concept and it will be integration of f of x dx and the better way to write this integration of function f of x dx is equal to phi of x plus a constant c why we have to take this constant we will understand this in an example so this is the process of integration so basically we can define or the simplest way to define the integration is integration is basically antiderivative antiderivative that means opposite of performing differentiation is known as integration so antiderivative means opposite of differentiation so the process of Calculating antiderivative is known as integration. Integration. So you can see in this example we have a function phi of x and by differentiating this function phi of x we get the function f of x. In opposite way we can say if we integrate this function f of x we can get the function phi of x. So by this example you can easily observe that antiderivative means integration or the opposite of differentiation is integration. So let us learn some formula of integration and then we will learn about method of performing integration. So before that let us see why we have to take the constant c every time while writing the formula for integration. So let us learn why we have to consider the term constant in every formula of integration. Suppose we have a function dy by dx is equal to x. Now as we have just learned that if we integrate the function x dx we can easily get the function y. So if we write dy is equal to x dx that is we multiply the term dx in this side. Now integrating both sides we can get y is equal to x square by 2 plus a constant c. Now let us do not consider any constant in this case. Suppose if we want to verify the question that if we want to put the value of y in this equation it will be d dx and the value of y x square by 2 and the result will be x. So we have verified the question with the help of the answer. Now let us suppose a function y is equal to x square by 2 plus 3. Now let us put this value of y in this equation so it will be d dx of x square by 2 plus 3 and it will be the differentiation of this term will be x and the differentiation of the constant 3 will be 0. So you can see the result of differentiation of the term x square by 2 is same result or differentiation of the term x square by 2 plus 3 that is x only. Now let us consider one more function y is equal to 
x square by 2 plus 5 so if we put the value of y in the given equation so it will be x square by 2 plus 5 now the differentiation of this term will be x and this term as this is a constant it will be 0 so you can see for all this value of y this and this and this we are getting the same value of the differentiation that is x x x so we can say for this equation there is not a single solution there is a set of solution so if we generalize this condition such as y is equal to x square by 2 plus a constant c then if we differentiate this we will get ddx of x square by 2 plus c it will be x plus 0 that is x so this is the concept that we have to take or we have to consider a constant term c for integration such that if we integrate any function of this type we get a generalized solution because if we differentiate the constant term c we will get zero so for this type of problem where there is a set of solution exist you can see for this type of problem there is no unique solution there is a set of solution so the generalized way to write the solution of this equation is we have to consider a term c and this constant can be anything as we know if we differentiate any constant the result is zero so we can take or we can consider any constant in the case of integration so this is the correct way we have to consider a constant every time while integrating so let us learn some fundamental formula of integration as we have already studied the concept behind differentiation so we can easily understand the concept of integration so let us learn differentiation and integration side by side suppose we have a function x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and if we want to differentiate this with respect to x the value of differentiation will be x to the power n the same way if we integrate this function x to the power n dx then the result will be x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 and we have to add a constant so we have just learned that the opposite of differentiation is integration so by differentiating this function we get this function similarly if we integrate this function then we can get this function so this is the first formula the second formula is ddx of so let us quickly learn all this formula so ddx of log x is equal to 1 by x in the same way it will be integration of 1 by x dx is equal to log x plus c the third is ddx of e to the power x is equal to e to the power x in this case integration of e to the power x dx will be equal to e to the power x plus c the fourth formula is ddx of ax by log a and the base of log is e and the value is a to the power x so in opposite way we can write the integration of a to the power x dx will be equal to a to the power x by log a and the base of log is e plus a constant c ddx of minus cos x is equal to sin x because ddx of cos x is equal to minus sin x so ddx of minus cos x will be sin x and in opposite way we can write integration of sin x dx will be minus cos x plus c and the sixth is ddx of sin x ddx of sin x is cos x so in the case of integration it will be ddx of cos x dx will be sin x plus c let us learn some more formula please try to remember all this formula because if you remember all this formula then integration will become very easy for you okay i think all of you have studied all this formula in class 11 or 12 so just try to revise all this formula so let us take the seventh formula that is ddx of 
tan x is equal to sec square x. So in the case of integration, it will be integration of sec square x dx is equal to tan x plus c. The eighth formula is d dx of minus cot x is equal to cos x square x. So in the case of integration, it will be integration of cos x square x dx is equal to minus cot x plus constant c. So the ninth formula is d dx of sec x is equal to sec x into tan x. So in this case, it will be integration of sec x tan x dx is equal to sec x plus c. Number 10 is d dx of minus cosec x is equal to cosec x and cot x. In this case, it will be integration of cosec x into cot x dx is equal to minus cosec x plus c. And the number 11 is d dx of log sin x is equal to cot x. Now, in the case of integration, it will be integration of cot x dx is equal to log sin x plus c. Number 12 is d dx of minus log cos x is equal to tan x. And in the case of integration, it will be integration of tan x dx is equal to minus log cos x plus c. Now 13 is d dx of log sec x plus tan x is equal to sec x. So in the case of integration, it will be integration of sec x dx is equal to log sec x plus tan x plus a constant c. So number 14 is d dx of log cosec x minus cot x is equal to cosec x. Now in the case of integration, it will be integration of cosec x dx is equal to log cosec x minus cot x plus c. Number 15 is d dx of sin inverse x by a is equal to 1 by root under a square minus x square. In the case of integration, it will be integration of 1 by root under a square minus x square into dx is equal to sin inverse x by a plus c. Number 16 is ddx of cos inverse x by a is 1 minus 1 divided by a square minus x square. And in the case of integration, integration of minus 1 by a square minus x square dx is equal to cos inverse x by a plus c. Number 17 is ddx of 1 by a into tan inverse x by a is equal to 1 by x square plus x square. And in the case of integration will be it will be integration of 1 by a square plus x square into dx is equal to 1 by a tan inverse 
x by a plus a constant term c. Number 18 is ddx of 1 by a cot inverse x by a is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by square plus x square. In the case of integration, integration of minus 1 by a square plus x square into dx is equal to 1 by a cot inverse x by a plus c. Number 19 is ddx of 1 by a sec inverse x by a is equal to 1 by root under x into sorry x square minus a square so in the case of integration integration of 1 by x into root under x square minus a square dx is equal to 1 by a sec inverse x by a plus c number 20 is ddx of 1 by a cosec inverse x by a is equal to minus 1 divided by x into x square minus a square in the case of integration it will be integration of minus 1 divided by x into x square minus a square dx will be equal to 1 by a cosec inverse x by a please try to memorize all these formula